What's up guys, we're back. And this week, we're talking about collagen protein. But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment because I told you so. Don't do it for the algorithm, do it for me. Now, a little background on this. When collagen protein first got brought to the market as a supplement, I immediately was very critical of it because if you look at the amino acid profile of collagen protein, it's pretty trash for anabolism. It is literally one of the lowest, worst sources of leucine out there. Actually, it's the lowest I know of, the worst I know of. Maybe there's one that's worse, but I'm not aware of it. Why is that important? Leucine is the amino acid responsible for stimulating skeletal muscle protein synthesis. Now, I know a thing or two about leucine because I did my PhD literally on leucine. While supplemental leucine does not appear to affect muscle mass, we do know that the leucine content of complete protein sources is a very strong predictor of the anabolic nature of that protein. Many people countered this and said, well, you're not taking collagen protein to improve muscle mass, you're taking it for connective tissue because it'll increase the synthesis of connective tissues and help your connective tissues. Okay, cool. We know from previous research that whey protein does not increase the rate of synthesis for connective tissue. It only increases skeletal muscle protein synthesis, which is great for skeletal muscle, but maybe some people are worried about their connective tissue and joints. And many people have said anecdotally, hey, when I take collagen protein, I feel better, my joints feel better, you know, those sorts of things. So this study was the first study to assess whether or not collagen protein supplementation specifically increases the rate of connective tissue synthesis. They gave two groups of people, and it was a mix of men and women, either 30 grams of whey protein or 30 grams of collagen protein, and then look to see what happened with muscle protein synthesis and connective tissue synthesis. Well, as expected, whey protein increased muscle protein synthesis, but collagen protein really didn't. And that was, as expected, associated with a much greater rise in blood levels of the amino acid leucine after whey protein ingestion. Now, when we look at connective tissue synthesis, neither protein increased connective tissue synthesis. So whey protein was superior for skeletal muscle, neither protein increased connective tissue synthesis. Based on this study so far, we can say that taking collagen protein for connective tissue really doesn't seem to do much. And it, honestly, I'm not surprised. Because if you understand digestion and protein metabolism, you understand when you eat a protein, like a whey protein or a collagen protein or whatever it is, when you're eating a protein, you're eating a long chain of amino acids that have been folded up into a protein. And during the process of digestion, that 3D dimensional structure of the protein gets unfolded or denatured, mostly in the stomach by stomach acid. And uh, then it starts to get chopped up by enzymes like pepsin and pepsinogen. And then when it gets to the small intestine, it's exposed to the proteases from the pancreas like trypsin and chymotrypsin and those start chopping off all those amino acids into individual di and tripeptides. So basically what you start out with is this big globular protein that gets unfolded and chopped up into its individual amino acids. And so what you actually end up seeing in your bloodstream, what your body sees is individual amino acids. So unless there is an individual amino acid in collagen protein that's stimulating connective tissue synthesis, it's unlikely that it's gonna have a big effect. And with regards to whey protein, it's high in leucine, and we do know that leucine stimulates skeletal muscle protein synthesis. In fact, in response to ingestion of whey protein, you can see up to a two, three, or four time increase in the plasma levels of leucine, and that seems to trigger skeletal muscle protein synthesis. So what's the take home from all this? If you're taking collagen protein for skeletal muscle protein synthesis to, to get bigger muscles, you're literally picking the worst protein that you can find. If you're taking it for connective tissue health, based on this study, it doesn't appear to improve connective tissue synthesis. This is why my supplement line, Outward Nutrition, did not jump on the collagen bandwagon, does not sell a collagen supplement, 
And quite frankly, unless there is a preponderance of evidence that comes out to support collagen, we will not be selling a collagen protein supplement. However, we do sell whey protein because it is a high quality protein source that has been shown to increase muscle protein synthesis, muscle mass, strength, and it even has some overall health benefits in terms of like improving insulin sensitivity and possibly even like antioxidant effect. There appears to possibly be some effects on glutathione, at least with whey protein concentrate. Whey protein really has a lot of evidence to back up its efficacy and it typically tastes good and it's not terribly expensive compared to some of these other protein powders out there. So if you want a high quality, really good tasting whey protein isolate at a competitive price, we would encourage you to check out my supplement line, Outwork Nutrition. The link is in the description. All right, guys, hope you liked the video and I'll catch you next week.